Hi, Nikki. Thanks so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> what I wanted to do was just, um, obviously, we're going to have a chat about uh, writing a book and advice to anyone out there who's interested and feels that they have a book in them that they, that they want to get out, to use your own words. But before we do, I thought I'd start with just a bit of background information. If you can share with me how it is that you got to be in the profession you're in, which obviously um, isn't actually writing. No, no. I mean, this this is the joy of it, really. I'm not, you know, I'm not a writer. I never considered myself a writer, um, but I, I had that calling. So I'm a psychologist, uh, counselling, and um, I'm also, I, I'm a healer. So I'm very interested in energy work. And it really came from this kind of life path, life purpose. So I started with uh, just being very interested in people since being a teenager, really. <laughs> I've been an observer, so I've been nice. just curious and I would be one of those people that everyone would talk to <laughs> about anything and everything. And um, so, yeah, it, it just, my kind of getting into psychology work and, and therapy type work, therapeutic work was very natural. Um, However, the energy work and waking up to that, you know, that's that was my personal story. So um, I, I was six. So I was diagnosed with lupus, um, systemic lupus erythematosus when I was 19. And and it was a long kind of 15 year journey of uh, just experiencing sickness and inflammation and pain. And um, and I got to the the point where I was on an awful lot of steroids. I just had two children, um, no energy, kind of endocrine system was in, uh, not failure, but I wasn't producing much cortisol, no DHEA, no growth hormone. So I was just, you know, I was not um, thriving. And I had one of those epiphany moments where it's like, if I don't do something myself, then I I couldn't see myself kind of, you know, riding a bike with my kids or, or seeing seeing them you know grow old so yeah Nikki can I just interrupt you there um, a lot of us have heard the term lupus but many of us possibly don't know what exactly that is you mentioned inflammation pain but can you give us just a bit of a background about what exactly lupus is yeah sure it's it's a autoimmune disease so it's a chronic autoimmune disease and you um yeah so it can affect any part of the body so systemic lupus uh, erythematosus just means that it can affect any organ um, sometimes you know skin I, ha I experienced it in the brain and in my joints mostly so um, but it's you know theoretically and th and this is where it's important to think outside of the box and I think this is what's really helpful in the you know becoming an author is it's incurable so mm -hmm. Um, when I got to that point of realizing that I wasn't getting the help that I wanted or needed through the medical system, I just started to kind of reach out. Long, long story, I'm going to make sure, you know, had an epiphany that I needed to take personal responsibility for my own healing. But if it wasn't going to happen from the external, I needed to stop looking outside for someone to help me, save me, rescue me. And it needed to be an inside job and so I started researching kind of found and awoke to alternative health and because I was a psychologist so I did go through my training I was I was very interested in the mind and understanding mm -hmm. the mind processing emotions and I went through a massive personal journey of transformation and uh, through that process together with herbs and um, bit of homeopathy mo mostly herbs and nutrition and mind work belief work um i yeah i had a complete recovery so it took me about five years so it was um you know i mean i had a, a fast kind of curve in the first year year or two and then slowly my energy came back and and came back into you know perfect health so so that was my story and I think when you're writing there's a story that inspires you there's a story there's something that you want to share in terms of how we can 
shine, how we can go beyond the limitations that we perceive. And so, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's interesting you say you're not first and foremost a writer, but I mean, I, I just think of some of the most um, interesting and perhaps successful books I've ever read, and, and they're not written by trained writers, they're written by people who have had real experiences. Um, and that sounds very much um, like you and your journey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's a real immersion in spirituality, in energy work, in understanding belief programs and how we can actually unpack them and how we can shift and create our own reality. And, you know, it's a massive shift. I think it's one that we're seeing now globally in terms of a big shift from disempowerment into, you know, victimhood into our own sovereignty. So, mm. you know, that's the journey I think we go through when we awaken more spiritually to our inner truth and to our connection to all that is and you know, we access the meaning in life and those kinds of beautiful things um yeah so that's that's really the journey and, and i guess that's what my book was about i wanted to let people know that healing was possible and um yeah i got given a system so i got given a, a self-help belief change system and i just had to share it and when you say you got given a system, as in the universe gave the system to you because, as a result of the hard work and the research and, and just the will that you had, or uh, are we talking a different system? Yeah, I, I don't think it was kind of because of the work that I'd done, I got given it. it um, but yes, I, I, was, I was clear enough to be able to receive and to piece together the bits that work for me. And I just, I had a vision of um a, a method that kind of ties together a lot of what i've learned uh but also it was something that i saw as like a vision a, a gift i guess to say look you can share this now to help other people go through the process that you've been through um so yeah it was surrender it's like an, an act of surrender i guess so just um before we look at writing a book more broadly specifically at your own journey and your book and um, this I'm getting the impression this isn't just beneficial to people um, who have an autoimmune disease it could be people who are challenged in in any particular health concern or could it be anything anything no yeah I mean it massively helped me to write the book <laughs> It's about just removing limitations, you know, re removing these perceived um, ideas or notions that we're unworthy, that we're unlovable, that uh, we're not good enough, um, that we're insignificant, that what we have to say isn't important. You know, all of these beliefs just prevent us from stepping into our uh, authentic selves, into our true nature, into our power. And um, yeah, so it can be used for literally any anything where we feel like we have blocks that we need to just release a bit of a, a, a guidebook a guidebook into life and getting the best out of it for you or finding the right life for you would that be too much of a step to make yeah no absolutely yeah yeah but it and it it helps specifically in that connection to yourself and that connection to your inner truth it's like it's like shedding the identity shedding the ego shedding the stories shedding you know the what we're not you know we're not the emotions we're not our belief systems and structures we're not our experiences you know these have all shaped us and they're part of us but when you let go of the attachment to that i guess it also helps in awakening you know in accessing who we are and mm. the, the method itself connects you to earth connects you to spirit you know it uses qigong so it just creates it, that emptiness that stillness through which old energy can release because it's not us it's not we don't need to attach to it and it helps the alignment so what's needed and what the book do, or the method does and the book shares completely is this um, enabling you to energetically align with beliefs of your choosing whether it's your greatness your safety your self-expression, um, your empowerment, um, your connection to source or whatever that may be. So it enables you to align with that so that you can, um, you know, because affirmations aren't enough. 
<laughs> there's no point in repeating something over and over again if they're helpful to take you away from the negative but they don't give you that alignment so the belief shift helps you to resonate it with it and feel it and that's where we manifest that's where we become creative beings yeah. so we can manifest the life that we want um, through resonating with and vibrationally attracting into us what we want to create it actually sounds exactly like the book the world needs after 2020 doesn't it <laughs> yes well exactly and this is why i had no idea honestly but i had no idea it just blew through me at such a rate and and it was published in 2019 it was published last year and my card deck there's a card deck that comes with it and that was um that was released this summer so it just, I, I had no idea why the urgency, the urgency, but I was so pushed to, and it wow. just, everything aligned. I got a publisher with about three weeks of attempting to get one. It's just bum, 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 bum. So, but so it, 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 absolutely meant to be. I mean, it, it, yeah. this is all feeding into, I, I imagine what the book's partly capturing as well, isn't it? Because in creating this book and in publishing it, you're realising your own method, I suppose. Completely. I couldn't have done it. I don't think I would have got through the process without using the method because no. I had all of the stuff come up that who do you think you are? You're a fraud. You know, da da da, da. All, this, all the limitations, all the stuff. So I had to clear that and just allow the resistance to clear, allow myself to step into the possibility and just do it just yeah that's fantastic you were the um the the what is it the master and the apprentice at the same time uh that's really beautiful yeah completely and there's this illusion that we have to be the master we have to know exactly what we're doing in order to in order to create in order to step into that and we don't you know we're all feeling our way we're all working on the edge of our comfort zone so i love that and i think that that's a really great segue into what the general thrust of this conversation is about which is um potentially giving people ideas and confidence and advice to take that step and and write the book that's within them whatever it might be about um mm. and you obviously had to go through that process of facing um your own confidence issues in you know can you do it have you got what it takes will you be able to do it the right way all these questions of self-doubt I suppose yeah. that come into your mind the moment you do something new and alien and and potentially scary um without giving away the essence of the book you know what's the advice you would give to someone who's got that book in them um and wants to get it out what's the first thing that they need to do um, but you know what comes up as you say that is is just really feel the passion for it in your heart. You know, let your heart bring it through. It is about surrender because we always have so much noise in the I can't or you know fear of rejection or fear of failure. So that's always going to be there, but it's not letting it stop you. It's just noticing that it's programs. So if you can, the, the first thing is to connect with your, your heart energy and you know, what wants to come through, what bursts and feel excited by that, feel mm. into um, what is it that you have to say and recognize that your experience is completely unique, that no one has the experience that you've had and that that's mm. valid and significant and important. And um, yeah, part of that is raising up to allow yourself to have that passion and to to step into that I can rather than I can't. Well, that's a lovely way of yeah. putting it. Step into what you can rather than what you cannot. Yeah. What about um, the technical side of things? You, I imagine that if you're buoyed by this passion, there'll be a flow that comes out of you and you'll find your voice, you'll find your tone, you'll find your, um, your, your own method. But if you're not a writer, technically what sort of advice do you give someone as they start to either put pen to paper or tap away on the keyboard? Um, to, be, to begin with, 
don't feel like you need to get it perfect. So, you know, start with just what, it, you know, the ideas, you know, formulate the ideas, formulate what it is that you want to say. Um, having a, a broad outline to begin with is really helpful. So work through your chapters and then start to create, um, you know, what's called chapter summaries. So you have a little paragraph of what you're going to say in each chapter, what each chapter is going to be about. And then you have a structure of a book and that feels easier. And then you can start with one chapter at a time. Mm -hmm. So you've got, you've got your overview of what it is that you want to say, what it is that you want to share and break it down into the chapters, little chapter summaries. And then from those chapter summaries, you know, just start to expand and, and then you can neaten it up. Yeah, I, I had about three, three, four people that I got to read my work and just give feedback with. And um, one of my one of my clients was a writer. So she okay. had to look over things for me and um, just helped to, you know, tighten up the English a little bit. Um, right. But what was important, it is, you know, it's not necessarily the, the structure. When you've got something to say, it will flow. Mm. It will come. Yeah. And so I think not getting attached to that detail is probably important. But yes, you know, there's a whole editing process that goes on after you just got it on paper. But that's the most important thing. Just get it on paper or on the laptop. Just cre create, get yourself into creator mode. So create space, create sacred space. Okay, um, so create space. So literally, literally create your own little writing hub as well as your own mind space. Is that, do you find that's helpful for the creative process? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and whether you make it nice with a bunch of flowers or, you know, you just clear the deck and see it, see it as, um, it's almost as if when you get into that creative flow, you're accessing the higher self, you're accessing your higher wisdom. So it's trusting that that higher wisdom is there. And really it's just in surrendering. There's a lady, um, and I don't remember her name, but her book is a very famous book and you'll probably know it. Um, and it's Morning Pages. Pages. Oh, I feel terrible that I don't. Don't know. Um, I should go rapidly on the side. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> so I did get the book. I didn't use it because I was in just force flow. But I know that a lot of authors do use that and swear by Morning Pages as a method to just get up first thing in the morning and just write. So it doesn't right. matter what's under the paper, but it's getting in the habit of just allowing that flow to come through. That's so, interesting. Yeah, I've heard that concept before. I just didn't know that that was the source. Yeah. Um, you you've talked about getting the book out of you, getting the story out of you, and and you've used the words clear the deck. Is writing um, a, a book a cathartic experience? I think so. Yes, it is. Um, it's it's a very reflective process. It's an emotional process, a psychological process. You know, it does bring up things in you as you're writing, um, but it is very cathartic. My, the first uh, section of my book, the first three chapters were my life story. Um, so personally, for me, it was, a, it was a cathartic process of making sense of, of capturing and of just very openly and very rawly sharing, um, you know, my life story. But I think anyone that's writing, you know, there's something that is very personal that comes into those pages. So it is, it is a personal process, um, but a beautiful one. And I guess, you know, this is the, this is, is the journey and it's seeing it as a process and as a journey of just allowing yourself that deep connection with, with you, with your heart, with this uh, higher self or your, your inner wisdom and the reader because ultimately you're writing to an audience i think that's something to remember when you're writing as well um because when the i'm a fraud or people are going to reject this or not like this or i'm going to upset people or people are going to challenge what i'm saying or all of that comes in any book is not for everybody mm. so you're writing for an audience and you're writing for somebody that's interested and generally you're going to get people that are interested that are going to purchase your book. They're going to be drawn to it for a reason. 
So know that you're writing to an audience that wants to hear what you have to say. Fantastic. Um, and just on that audience, then you mentioned that you had the, the three close connections who helped you edit. What, once you've got that down, once it's edited, how do you go about finding a publisher? My understanding is it can be quite a, a quagmire. Yeah. Um, I think I was very blessed and fortunate in some ways, but if I then unpick that, there's no reason that no one else, you know, anybody else could do that. So for, for me, I had the idea, I had the system, I knew that I needed to get it out there. And then I ended up sitting next to an author on a plane. Um, oh, so I love it. picking his brains and he um, was kind of an agent or acting as an agent. Um, and actually that flow didn't go very far, but it inspired me to start to find an author. And it's exactly the same thing as the lupus. He was opening up doors. You know, he, he suggested I needed to write my plan. So I, I wrote the, um, you know, the outline of the book about the author. You need an about the author section. You need your chapters and your chapter summaries and you need your first three chapters. Okay. You need a market kind of appraisal so that you can compare your book to others. Where does your book sit within the market? Who's the audience? Who's it for? And you need a promotion plan. So how are you going to promote your book? Um, you know, building wow. a platform, those kinds of things. So you're going to be wow. much more acceptable to uh, a public publicist if you have a platform. Okay, um, so yeah, so you put together these chapter summaries and, and your first three chapters, and that's what you need. And then you can send off your book proposal to publishers. Um, and theoretically, you need an agent. Um, however, so that, you know, that's the traditional line. However, I use the process to energetically align with I'm a successful and published author. And I cleared all the resistance out to that. And, you know, this is like the synchronicities. So if your book is meant, if you've got it in your heart and it's meant, it will happen. So I, I saw an email come through about the National Book Fair in London, which was like a week away. So I booked a ticket and I went and I got there and I started wandering around going, OK, I've got my book proposal in my hand. And I started wandering around and speaking to everybody and everyone was saying, oh, no, you need an agent. No, sorry. You know, you need an appointment. You need an appointment or you need an agent. Da, da, da. It was like <laughs> Joseph and Mary walking through the stable. <laughs> like, sorry, before, sorry, before. And then this one one lady, well, it was a, it was a gentleman from Deep Books said, speak, speak to this lady so um i went to kind of catch her attention and she told me to come back a couple of hours later she's like i'll give you 10 minutes and in that 10 minutes i don't know what happened i was in tears we just had this connection i guess it was like just so important that this book comes through and she felt the energy of that you know everything was aligned she took my book proposal said i really like it i'll let you know and got back to me 48 hours later and said yes wow so it was wow. like yeah so what a great story it is a great story but i think the significance of it is again just remove the limitations all these ideas that it's not possible you know so Did that, that make it into the story <laughs> did that story make it in as a as a final piece it to the did, it did it, it did <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's a... Oh, that's great. Yeah. Wow. Wow. It really is the book that captures exactly what it captures and does exactly what you're trying to share with everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, it can be used for manifestation. And I, I guess it really highlights the importance of working with the energetics, of working with the belief of clearing the resistance. And, um, allowing it is the surrender and allowing and the listening to the little signals that you might get you know we're not alone we're not alone and if you've got an important message to say 
um, share it, share it, share it, because it helps us connect. It helps people just to connect. And this is and, what we- Oh, absolutely. In writing this book, Nikki, have you found that the method, the, the method you set in place, the method that you're now teaching through this book, is, do you live this consciously on a day-to-day basis? Are you regularly just clearing the decks or is it something that, is it a mythology that you need to sit down to and, and say, I'm, I'm ambushing myself here, this is now what I need to do? Yeah, it's, it's more that. So I think in the beginning, it's really exciting because you can feel the shifts. And so you go through a process of maybe a couple of months of just clearing stuff. And that's where you start to see life transforming and some of the difficulties f- falling away. And then it comes to a point where it's like, okay, I notice I've got a problem or I notice I've got an issue, something's stuck. So then I would go to the method. So if I, so just before um, Christmas, I was, I woke up early one morning and I was asked to create this as a belief change method for children. So children could access and use the process. So I know I'm going to have to go through this process again. I started, I was asked to start writing it on New Year's Day and I did. (laughs) And just wrote down the, you know, the outline and a few of the kind of chapters, summaries and and made a start. But um, I know that I'll have to go through that process again of, okay, what do I need to clear now? And sometimes it's having the space, it's the busyness, it's the commitment, because it is a commitment. So it's just, um, you know, it's there when you need it. And I think that's how I use it now. Um, and a lot of people that I um, know, or a lot of the practitioners, so I've got practitioners that are trained in this method now. And you know, that's the pattern that I've seen with them. They go through a big clearing process and then they just pick it up when they need it. Fantastic. Uh, I imagine this isn't the case with you given the, the method, but you do sometimes hear um, authors say the second book is more challenging after the success of the first i'm guessing that's not the case for you if you're if you're able to be conscious of that and clear clear that negative thinking yeah um i i wouldn't expect that with this um for me as a non-writer that first book and for me i'm also very oh i'm much more comfortable now but I really uh, was quite shy publicly in terms of speaking out, being seen. I had a lot of kind of um, feeling silenced and having my voice taken away. So it's a big thing for me to write a book and break through that, allowing myself to be heard, allowing myself to be seen. Um, so I guess it just depends what the blocks are it, and that's that's exactly it if there are authors struggling with that second book then they need, the, they need your what's, book yeah what's the block yeah <laughs> <laughs> have you got the book there that you can show us Nikki I don't I don't no uh, I just thought that before I, I should have asked before before we caught up but I, I what do I'll do have, is I'll... I do have so this is the little book from the card deck and the big book is but it's very similar it's just um it's called working with chakras for belief change terrific and what i'll do anyway is get um some images from you and we can drop a link in the article for anyone who's interested in the book as well as story behind the book oh that's great nikki really interesting chatting to you i wasn't expecting um I wasn't expecting this particular story. It's great to hear. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's it, it's it's certainly been a journey and it's been a, a calling. Um, but I do think that's the same with every author. I think you have to have a calling to uh, to allow yourself to go through that process. And and I would just say, like you know, be authentic. Um, mm. you know, let go of the it's always working through fear and coming into trust and faith and allowing that inner light to shine and to be empowered and to speak. Um, And that's where we're all heading. I'm sure I'm certain of it. So such a positive thing to share at the start of 2021, I think just 
you know, for everyone to really take stock and, and clear out the negatives of a, a year of lockdown and, and see 2021 for what it can be rather than, you know, what it is in context to the year that was. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's it's really big for that. If I, if I can just kind of speak to that a bit, because the, you know, I think 2020 was about... Um, we're going through a great awakening and so you know globally and collectively when we go through an awakening you have to do that inner work you know you have to clear out the shadows and I think collectively we're having to do that and so we're being put in a position where we feel disempowered where you know there is victimhood patterns coming up that we're all having to process and deal with you know we're having to move into our sovereignty you know it's almost like detaching from the commander and chief the you know being governed and we're having to find our own way and our own light and reuniting and be empowered in ourselves and trust ourselves and trust our intuition so much um distortion out there so it, it's a massive it's a massive journey that mm. and um and in 2021, I think we're going to see a lot of dissolution and a lot of deconstruction. Um, and it's up to us. It is really up to us to do the rebuilding and to do the creating of what we want. Um, so that's really important not to focus on everything that's falling apart, but to, to really focus and really create the new, because this is how it's going to move so much more quickly is when we, we show up and, and create this, you know, life and world that we want to live in and want to exist in. Yeah. So true. I mean, it it really is, um, it's not just clearing ourselves out, is it? It's also not necessarily creating a wall between us and and whatever these negatives are, be it disinformation, misinformation, uh, just negativity all around us. Yeah. We've got to we've got to build a defense system that enables us to be impervious to that, so that when we do clear the decks, we can then fill it with positivity rather than a blank canvas that then gets throttled by all these other negative life forces, whatever that they, they might be. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's it's kind of like unplugging from all that negativity and dis disconnecting from it, so that yeah. you can be in a in your own light and yeah so you know that affirmations positive beliefs and really affirming who we are reconnecting to that inner light and the inner flame and yeah. um yeah it's a shift from looking outside to really taking that personal responsibility for changing how you feel and changing making choices making good choices yeah. for yourself and for others yeah i think yeah. it's um it's the book anyone who's who's had a bit of introspection during the last 12 months needs to read. I thought I was interviewing you about how to write a book and I, I didn't think I'd finish up by actually wanting now to read <laughs> the book. I, I thought this was just going to be an information session for me rather than an inspiration session. <laughs> I'll jump. I'll have to get the website link, Nikki, for myself as well as anyone else who's interested. <laughs> Thanks so much, Nikki. It's really great chatting to you. Pleasure, pleasure. Lovely to talk about it and share as well. Yeah.